going to invite uh, uh, our next presenter, Theo. Theo, uh, I will request you to keep within the 10 minutes, uh, <laughs> if possible, Ace. Uh, then we'll move on to Arthur. Thank you very much. See you. Okay, super. Okay, hello, people. Hello, guests. I'm just trying to share my screen also now. Let me check here. Share. Okay, Mr. Kawire, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, most welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Theo Vos. I'm the team leader of uh, Karatunga Arts and Tours. Uh, we operate in, like I say, in the northeast of Uganda. And I think this uh, picture you see in front of me uh, says it all. Um, let me go to my next slide from here, if I manage. Uh, this is me in the community. Uh, we are really uh, uh, sons and daughters of the soil. Uh, and this region of ours is really been untapped and unexplored for, for decades. Um, before I start my presentation, I first would like to share that we are also part of the Adventure Tourism Uganda uh, uh, initiative. Um, we are a, a group of companies, uh, Dutch Uganda companies, who are actually uh, busy with diversifying the tourism product offering in Uganda by developing adventure tourism products. You can see it here, we have a wide variety of, of organizations, uh, from mountain hiking, running tourism, uh, bicycle tourism, uh, capacity building, female guide trainings, and also cultural guide trainings. So check the website adventuretoursinuganda.com for more information. Uh, and maybe some of you people have already met us during the uh, first Adventure Tourism Expo that took place in Kampala a few days ago. Yes, yeah, so what I'm going to tell you guys um, is actually something a, a bit more a practical experience. I think uh, all my, uh, my previous, uh, the previous talkers, speakers have already, already uh, enlightened much about the potential of Adventure Tourism. And they have enlightened much about the, the, the necessity of, uh, of uh, regulations and guidance. Uh, I think for me, I can maybe just show you a good experience uh, why adventure tourism can really be beneficial for, for, for our country, our region, and the communities. Um, so we are operating actually in the northeastern part of Uganda, uh, called the Karamoja region. Uh, the region has uh, almost the same size of the country of Belgium. Um, the, the region has a, yeah, a moving history. Um, uh, so we have a lot of post-war recovery going on. We have a high unemployment rate. A high illiteracy rates, uh, the population is growing uh, fast, and we have uh, been dealing with a negative image. But at the same time, uh, the trends, like have been, uh, been highlighted by my previous uh, colleagues, uh, people are more and more looking for these authentic cultural experiences. People are looking for untamed outdoor adventures. People want to go off the beaten track. And especially after the pandemic, people are looking more and more for uh, experiences, how they can positively impact the people they go to, the locality, um, and go home with uh, yeah, an experience nobody else uh, is uh, able to see. <laughs> so uh, us in Karamoja, we had actually two, two big destinations in the north and in the south. Uh, one is Kidepo Valley National Park, uh, known by many, uh, one of the top uh, parks in, in Africa. And in the south, we actually had Mount Elgon, Sipi Falls, and Jinja. Um, but in between, nobody actually saw why, uh, what was the reason to actually travel through our region, uh, because there was, people thought there was nothing to do. There's no tourism product offered here. Um, it's just a fast, empty land, uh, desert-like. Uh, let's just travel around the region and go to Kidepo Valley. So people are not benefiting from this uh, tu tourism opportunity. Um, though in the meantime, when we are here, we actually saw a lot of opportunities. Uh, we have uh, endemic wildlife. Uh, four of the big five are within our region. Uh, we have 60% of the bird species of Uganda are in Karamoja. Uh, we are a truly off the beaten path destination. You need to do some effort to visit us, but then you get rewarded, like we say. Uh, we are one of the few places where uh, uh, we still have a, a living traditional cultural heritage, a rich history. Uh, and because of this uh, small population, what's growing, uh, people have really the feeling of being in this, uh, yeah, uh, out of Africa. You can see here, this is really a, a good example of how our lands look like. And it's difficult to find something like this in a communal land anywhere else in Uganda. Uh, what you see here, we have uh, uh, seven mountain ranges, where from actually three of them are more than three kilometer high. Uh, our beautiful culture, uh, people stay with the camels or the cows in the cattle camps. Uh, we have a history that's actually almost unwritten and uh, very rich linked to the Maasai and people in the lower Omo Valley of Ethiopia. We have potential for cycling tourism, especially because we are not so populated. 
Uh, and of course, our wildlife is fantastic here. But also archaeological findings, uh, rock paintings, uh, and we have the only endemic bird species of Uganda. The fox's weaver is actually, uh, his habitat is within our region and canoeing in our wetlands. So all these opportunities, but no products. So how do you fill this gap? How can you make uh, the communities actually benefit from this increasing demand of, of tourists for these uh, untamed locations? Um, of course, you need to uh, develop a capacity of the communities. Uh, we need to sensitize them about tourism. We advocate for, for, for the region being a destination. Uh, there was no product. There was no even a price or, or a guide uh, uh, for, for our mountain activities. So you need to develop products from scratch. And of course, the marketing and promotion was not at all present. Uh, so that's what, uh, what happened. So uh, from a destination with actually no tourism product, uh, only a national park, uh, there was a necessity for building capacity. Um, uh, we have by now more than 70 publications already uh, sensitizing these rural communities uh, about what is tourism, the benefits, the risks, the challenges, uh, and developing products together with the local community. So you can see here the vast lands of the size of Belgium. Um, uh, by now, actually, there are 147 uh, tourism uh, stakeholders within the region, and it's growing more than 200 uh, hospitality uh, staffs uh, and uh, more than 70 uh, publications, actually. Let me see here. So we also have mapped uh, other stakeholders. By now, there are 600 uh, community group members uh, active in the region, 91 guides uh, in various capacities, uh, and 179 businesses, tour operators, car rental companies, etc. cetera. Uh, and the potential of tourism is huge. Uh, for ourselves, for example, in the first four years of our business, we received, uh, um, uh, to correct this number, 1,000 tourists in total in a year, where from 500 of them really came for hiking, biking, et cetera, really for, for adventure tourism, where the other half really only came for uh, experiencing our authentic culture. Uh, so who are we? Uh, we're really here to bridge the gap between the opportunities on the ground, the supply, uh, and the demand of the tourists, and not only the travelers, but also really uh, the travel agents uh, and, uh, and the tour operators. Um, because if tourism is done well, uh, you're able to create jobs, you're able to uh, have the incentive, also what uh, was mentioned before me, to preserve our culture, our history, uh, and eventually what's very important in an area as ours, also to foster, foster peace within our communities. So you can see a good example is here, we, we have community groups we engage in. Uh, before this, they are totally uh, a bad actually perception of tourism, but now they're really benefiting from it in, in, yeah, in, in, in terms of cash. Also direct employment, uh, and in the beginning, the, the tourism sector, hospitality sector had uh, actually not a really attractive image, but now hoteliers are actually um, really valuing a skilled empl employee. Uh, also the non-formal job sector uh, is, is now coming up. Uh, ourselves, we have 25 tour guides within the region. Uh, and what I told you before, more than 90 um, people also working as, uh, as guide for, for companies, et cetera, and the numbers only growing. Uh, preservation of, uh, of, of nature is very important uh, and you can now really see the people uh, who are close to this and protected areas uh, they're looking for opportunities also how they can protect not only the culture but also their environment uh, and this is for example what we do we sit down with the elders in these communities to make sure they really uh, get out this this uh, ancient culture uh, and they keep on telling this to their, their children because without tourism actually they don't really have an incentive to do so uh, the, the life is changing, modernization is, uh, is just around the corner. Uh, and now actually with this, uh, with this uh, tourism coming up, it really gives them a good incentive to, to, to preserve. Uh, sensitizing the communities, like I told you. Uh, this is a group, for example, Mount Moroto, the highest mountain in our uh, region. Uh, they're really also dealing now in how can we make the trails also clean and how can we make them uh, um, clear for people to hike. Uh, like you see here, the community benefits from every tourist coming here. They get uh, a contribution for, for, for maintaining the trails and doing other uh, economical activities. Uh, and of course, uh, taking care of our children uh, from, from young age. So what is the future? Um, for us, the future is uh, not only in Uganda. I think if you look at the, the, the neighboring countries, uh, Rwanda, of course, is our destination already. Uh, people are, are selling Uganda in combination with a Kenya tourism product. But for us, uh, dealing in these untamed outdoor adventures, these uh, this true rich cultural packages, uh, we are actually looking to expand more to the northeastern side of the, of the country. 
Uh, for example, here just over the border, we have the um, uh, world's largest desert lake. Uh, nobody will believe there's uh, a beaches in the lake. <laughs> uh, we have more diverse cultural experiences. Uh, you can see here this, we have just been to South Sudan to do our, our trips. Um, but also many archaeological findings are just the over the over the borders. Uh, this is uh, something also I think the first speaker talked about. Uh, we are here to develop actually a trail, because we also believe so. If you just develop products um, anyhow, there's no uh, cohesiveness, there's no network. Uh, people might not really benefit from it. So the trail we also de developing now in the northeast of Uganda is called the Warrior Nomad Trail. Uh, it's a network of uh, uh, local communities, uh, small and medium enterprises to work together and to make this destination a must visit place uh, if people come to Uganda. That's my presentation. Thank <laughs> uh, you. Yes. Uh, great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you. You are, you are moving like a machine in this slide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the integration of culture. And in the presentation, 